Finally, I've got a seat covered in fiberglass. Welcome to Hack a Week. Well, I had high hopes for these brakes that they would work without rebuilding the calipers, but you know what? They're still dragging. Um, so I guess I gotta rebuild them. No big deal. 33 bucks a piece on eBay. Got two rebuild kits. So let's tear into them and do a rebuild on these calipers and get them right. Okay, I got some gloves on because I really hate getting brake fluid on my skin. Let's cover up some of this stuff here. Brake fluid will remove paint. So we gotta get the brake line off. And uh, when it comes off, it's going to want to leak out. I've got a little trick for that. It's a 10 millimeter banjo fitting, 10 millimeters inside there. I've got some tubing here that I can cut a piece of and push inside the banjo fitting and it will stop the flow of the fluid while I'm working. I'm going to lose a little bit here before I can get the uh, piece of hose stuck in there to stop the flow. But at least I can alleviate some of the mess here this way and save a lot of brake fluid and also some bleeding later. So if you get the right size piece of hose, it should just fit in there nice and tight. Push all the way through. It's a little difficult sometimes. Probably the pliers give a little twist here. See if we can persuade it to go the rest of the way. This one's being stubborn. Okay, I think I got it far enough. Looks like I stopped the flow of fluid. So let's put the banjo bolt and the two washers off to the side. Keep all the crud and dirt off everything as much as you can while you're working. So that should have stopped dripping anything now. Okay, let's get that up out of the way. We'll just tuck that back here like so. Now we gotta take the caliper off. To do that, we're going to remove these two bolts. This is a bit of review of what I did before, except before I just didn't have the pistons out all the way. All I did was pull the caliper off, move the pistons to their full extension, and uh, tried to free them up a little, but I guess that the uh, rubber seals are probably pretty hardened up. And there's the problem. bolts are out. Caliper should come free now. And there it is. And then let's take this bolt off. That holds that shield on that keeps the pins in place. That just slides up and then off like so. Now the pins should come out. Just give those a little tap. To be able to just pull them out with the players because I've had them out before. Lay those over here. Looks like I need a pair of needle nose for this one. Okay, out with the pads. Set those off to the side. Now there's the uh, there's the pistons. We need to push the pistons out. So there's a couple ways you could do that. 
you could hook the brake line back up and push them out and you're gonna get fluid all over the place. If that's the only way you have to do it, then so be it, go ahead and do that. The other way is with some compressed air and just pop them out. And of course, fluid's gonna come out, so we need to have a rag ready to catch all that. Okay, I finally have them both out. And they actually don't look too bad. The pistons look pretty good. They're pretty clean. Um, I'm gonna clean them up a little bit with a scotch brake pad just to make sure they're okay. The main concern is the bore in here, and that looks pretty good. There are two uh, sets of O-rings in these that you can pop out just with a small flat blade screwdriver or a small hook tool. There's one. That's the skinny one of the two. And there's one more further in. And that one is a little bit wider. Now what I'm seeing down in here is where a little bit of moisture got in and caused uh, a tiny bit of uh, corrosion and stuff and some of where are you uh, some of the crud in here is basically a lot like what was in that uh, carburetor it's just like you see a little bit of it on the screwdriver and it gets into the little uh, groove that the o-ring goes in and then that swells everything up and makes the piston move harder so I've got to get in there and clean all that crap out before I put the new o-rings back in. So that's pretty much the mechanism of why they get sticky. Got some brake fluid here, a simple artist brush, and we'll just dip that in, get a little brake fluid in here ahead of time, put a little bit in the grooves, and some down into that uh, cylinder, just to help everything go together a little easier. And then we'll put in one of the large ones first. Just basically get it started and work your way around in a circle and it will go in there. Well the pistons look pretty clean. Uh, not really a lot of corrosion or anything going on. Just need a little bit of a, a polish. So I'm going to take the scotch brake pad and twist it around this way. So if there's any scratches they'll be like this, less apt to, to leak or anything from, from the polishing. It's not going to take much. All we're after is just to remove any crud that might be on there. Now that we have these all nicely polished up, we need to put them back in. So let's get some brake fluid on one of them. Just put a liberal amount all the way around, make sure there's no dirt going on. And a little bit around the inside of the cylinder you want to slide it into push it in. Try to keep it as straight as you can as it goes in. Work it in a little at a time, don't force it. Do a little push. That's it, there we go. One rebuilt caliper. I've made a pretty simple bleeder bottle here out of uh, just a plastic water bottle. I put a little hole in the top of it. I've made a pretty simple bleeder bottle here for bleeding brakes. It's just a, a water bottle with a hole in the top the same size as the uh, the hose and then there's another tiny tiny hole next to that to let air out as the fluid comes in so I just need to hook that up now to the bleeder screw I'll put an 8 millimeter wrench on there crack it loose a little first and I'll put the hose on put the hose in the bottle a little further here I can just let that hang there Give the brake lever a squeeze and crack this open. Let go, let the brake lever go. A couple more squeezes, crack it open. Just keep repeating the procedure until you get a firm feel on the brake lever and no more air comes out when you open the bleeder valve. Okay, I think that's about it. Anything that's maybe still in the line will work its way back up toward the reservoir overnight and should be gone. It's 
So that's one caliper done and operational. All right, freshly rebuilt calipers. Let's see how they work. They don't drag anymore. Yay, awesome. Check that off the list. I've got the seat all ready for glass on the back half at least. I decided I'm gonna do a little more work on the front. I'm gonna do a, another new contour that kind of swoops up into the tank. And right along here, I'm gonna cut this down a little bit and then bring it up. So I'll deal with that later. But for right now, I wanna cover the back of this at least with some fiberglass mat that I've got already cut to shape. That will allow me to get going on uh, the portion of this where the battery's gonna go. The sooner I build this up, the better because then I can build up the inside and then I can pour in some uh, acetone in this area only and get away all that foam so I can see just uh, where I can mount a battery in there. So let's do some fiberglassing. On this one I'm just going to pour some right on and then start spreading it out. This is probably going to take a little more than I thought. Fiberglass mat really soaks up the resin, so I'll probably end up mixing up uh, about another four ounces, I'm guessing. That's a pretty thick layer. Lots of resin on that. So that should be a pretty strong first coat. I've got another template made here. I'm gonna do another hot wire cut on the seat. Uh, I've sanded the back. That all cured up last night. That's all sanded down that first coat. I wanna get a little bit lower in the saddle and I want something that comes up against the tank a bit right there. So I'm just gonna follow that contour with the hot wire cutter and alter the seat a bit before I finish glassing it up. Okay, here goes. out the part I added on really didn't matter much looks as though I cut most of it right off well that's all right I got what I was after I might try one more pass to smooth out some of the bumps here hey that's a little better I like that plus it gets me down in the uh, in the seat just a little bit more I'll just have to round up the edges a little bit now and then I can start glassing that section. More fiber glassing on the seat. Taking a different approach this time. I've already got the glass laid out in the places that I want. This is an alternative to the other methods you've seen me do. I've got nine ounces of resin mixed up and I'm just going to start wetting this out and as I do it'll, it'll stick to the surface. And that wraps that up. section the seating area is all shaped I've got a piece of glass on here all cut laid out nice tucked in got it already cut for the uh, folds everywhere six ounces of resin let's wet it out now I'm just taking the leftover resin I have and coating the back of this just to give it one more good solid coat. Help me ferret in and sand it smooth. 
coming along nicely. The bottom and the top of the seat are all glassed up right now so I can eat out some of this foam with acetone. This is where the battery is going to live. Which battery is yet to be determined. But I want to do uh, a melt out of this part of the foam in a controlled manner. So I'm going to try maybe just brushing some on a little at a time with uh, acetone that is a little bit at a time. And then hopefully I can kind of control where it melts and not have it just run back into here and eat out every single thing. I don't want to do that. I just want to take out enough in here for the battery. It looks like it's going to work okay. I can tell from this little bit of melt out that some of this stuff that's in between the uh, the layers, that white glue stuff, that's going to be a real pain in the butt to get out of the fuel tank. I mean, I can do it. I know I can get it all out of there. It's not just going to be a real quick, easy pour in the foam and it's all done. I'm going to have to do a little work reaching in there with a screwdriver, poking around and loosening it up. And give it a, a rinse a whole bunch of times. Well, it's mostly wiped out with a rag now. We've got this uh, all hollowed out now, so let's see what kind of a battery we can squeeze in there. Change of plan again, but that's how it goes when you're designing stuff and you're really not sure where you're going to end up. This didn't really work out well for the large battery, worked okay for the small battery. I really would like to keep the large battery. And then I realized, hey, why not just put it behind the seat brace above the rear tire. So I've got it sitting on just a piece of aluminum temporarily across the subframe. And uh, it looks like that's gonna work just great. I can stick the battery back there and I can keep the, uh, the larger battery which is nicer because I just have that much more cold cranking amps. That means I'm going to have to lengthen my cables a little bit. That's not such a big deal. I can do that. I'll just solder some uh, splices in here, add on whatever I need to them, and connect them up there. So what I need to do is weld a piece of steel right across the subframe here, basically a little battery box, and uh, that's where the battery's going to mount up. Well, that wraps up another week of building and uh, ended up with the battery in a place I didn't expect, but that's how it goes. I, I hope it'll clear okay here. The only time I can see that this tire would come up that high is on a, a really hardcore bump, but well, we'll just see how it works out. I'll have to uh, see what I can figure out for the geometries here of just how far the uh, rear tire is going to move and if that's really going to work out okay. But I'm going to run with it for now, right in this location. Got a lot done on the seat, just got to give it another layer of glass for some strength, keep glassing up the uh, gas tank, and then we'll get some foam dissolved out of there, hopefully in the next episode. So anyway, um, moving right along, don't know if I'm going to make it by my deadline at the end of the month, but if I do, I do, if I don't, I don't, I just keep on going. Anyway, till next time. Well, that wraps it up, but snup. Yeah, there's a blooper. That wraps snup. What's a snup?